This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Huh. Perhaps my wallet isn't the only thing I forgot. This is Wretched Radio. I'm ashamed of myself. Talking about the homeschooling business without mentioning Road Trip to Truth actually has a homeschool curriculum. Shame, shame on me. I'm going to go throw some dirt on my animal to express my disgust. Jimmy, you still got those potsherds in there? Those what? Potsherds. Sure. So I can scratch my boils when I sit in sackcloth and ashes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Misery. Doom, displeasure, agony on me. How did that song go? You know, you're from Tennessee. <laughs> Remember that song? No, I don't. From he, wait. He Haw? Yeah. Ah, I'm, I do remember Hee Haw. I'm from Minnesota, and I remember the Hee Haw better than the boy from Tennessee. Yeah, well, you know, Hee Haw was a little bit past my time. <laughs> yeah. I was just a babe, but the memory back then apparently was better than it is today because I forgot my wallet twice, even though I made a trip to get it the second time. And forgot to tell you, the road trip to truth, it is season one. The homeschool, we've got a Sunday school curriculum. The homeschool curriculum is a lot more, and it's accredited, and you can find it at Road Trip to Truth. You can find it at wretched.org. Just visit Road Trip, and you'll see that there's a curriculum. You can get the DVD. The kids watch segments of the 13-episode series, and then they dive deeper into these studies so that they can develop a Christian worldview. It's outstanding. I just can't believe that I would forget to mention it where we're talking about homeschool and Jimmy, as long as you brought up the Southern Baptist Convention. Yes. The the divide that is that is there, I think will be manifested. You just mentioned 14,000 people have registered. Yes. So the 14,000 messengers. Right, right, right. I'll tell you, this is it's it's kind of tidy and convenient right now because you've got a guy who's on the CRT issue, that's the big deal right now. He's on the left-hand side. He got a middle-of-the-road guy, not exactly sure which way he tips on certain things because he hasn't tipped his hand. And then you've got a guy to the far right. The vote, especially the first vote, going to tell you where they're at. It's going to be fascinating because it's going to have implications as to the future of the SBC. If it's like a third, a third, a third... Ooh, I'm telling you, it's going to be contentious for a season. Here are the issues that are at stake with the Southern Baptist Convention. There's a lot of articles that are being written about the subject. And I thought that this was rather helpful. This was from the Wall Street Journal of all places. Our Lord isn't work isn't woke. Southern Baptists clash over their future. That's the headline written by... Ian Lovett, here's how he defines the divide in the SBC. Try to figure, whether you're SBC or not, try to figure out where you slot into this because you likely do somewhere, maybe even with a foot in a couple of camps. One faction argues the SBC should step back from its role in electoral politics in order to broaden its reach and reverse a 15-year decline in membership. That's one faction, and as I understand it, that is the... I'm calling him more liberal. He probably wouldn't like that term, but on the CRT issue, more accepting of the CRT business, more of a push toward racial efforts to try to change the complexion of the SBC, which is 90% white, 10% everybody else. That is the group that doesn't want politics to be in the forefront of, of the convention anymore. They want the ERLC blotto. They, they don't want to be a political action committee. They want politics gone. That's one section. However, another faction says the denomination has been drifting to the left and the way to retain and attract members is to recommit to its conservative roots and stay politically engaged. So that would be the guys on the far right side. The conser- I think they're calling it the conservative Baptist movement. Go back to being the, the Southern Baptist Convention that was stout and robust and defended theology. All of it. Not just one or two pet issues, but all of it. 
perhaps including especially the role of women in the church, these also want to have more politically engaged activities in the SBC. So on the right-hand side, the conservative side, they still want a more political activism from the SBC. That is another swirling of the issues. Question, where would you fit in this? Hmm? What, what, what camp would you find yourself in? Jimmy, if I asked you, yes. are you a guy who would say, SBC, get out of politics, SBC, stay in politics, you would say? That's a tough question to answer. Um. <laughs> You're just doing chin boogie. No, 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 it no. It just sounded all of a sudden. Where did that? I don't support the the. You're like Mr. Political Voice. No, well, no. Well, that's a difficult question. Thank you for your question, Ted. <laughs> no, I, I I am more of the the conservative movement and thinks that think there needs to be a recommitment to the conservative beliefs. I history. agree. I agree. But, but so, what about the engagement? That is the same group though that appears, if this is assessment is correct, also wants the SBC to be politically engaged well uh, and i think there should be some semblance of that but maybe not as much as there has been okie dokie so i can see it a little bit from both sides yeah see i, I it, it seems to me that some of the observations about the sbc being known as much as a political force as a spiritual force or perhaps even more of a political beast um i think those critiques they're probably accurate. And I think the SBC, in my humble opinion, even though I forget my wallet twice, and to mention the homeschool curriculum that's available at wretched.org, would say, are you sure there isn't something more important like the gospel? It's. I think that this is an interesting thought experiment. Let's just imagine back in the days when folks were getting together to become the moral majority. This was an evangelical effort to become more politically engaged, to respond to the things like Roe v. Wade, to get engaged in Washington, D.C., to try to affect the direction of the country. And now what we've seen 40 years later is, and I think that this is pretty safe, the world, unbelievers, are kind of annoyed at us because of it. Especially, and this isn't any sort of commentary, this is just reality, especially because of Donald Trump. Man was a lightning rod. And if you were affixed to him in any way, shape, or form, you received the wrath of the left. And we would do well to ask the question, so what have been the fruits of that? And if Jimmy is right, okay, we need to do some, but not like that. What is that? How much is that? Do we have offices in Washington, D.C.? Are we appearing on talk shows to engage in the political issues? Are our podcasts about nothing but politics? With Bible verses slapped to them on occasion, by the way. Then maybe, just maybe, a reconsideration of the issue would change the complexion, at least of the attitude of the culture, to a degree they're always going to hate us. Isn't that what 1 John tells us? 1 John 2, verse something. Oh, see, there it is again. I, I'm, worried, mm. I'm worried about you. And I even wrote it. I've started this thing. I don't know what got me to do this because I have to tell you, if you told me that I was going to be doing this a few years ago, I'd be like, nah, ain't my style. But I think I was convicted by the former football coach of the, of the Atlanta, of the uh, Athens, Georgia, the Bulldogs football team. That's what they're called down there. <laughs> Mark Richt, go into his office if they let you in, because they probably have security and such. But I was brought in, snuck in really by a friend. And on his desk, he had cards with the Bible verses he was memorizing. Okay, so it's taken me a decade to get with the program. Started doing that. And one of the verses was from 1 John, that the world, you should expect the world to hate you. It's 1 John. Just look that one up yourself. Okay, they haven't started working yet, but they're gonna. I'm sure of it. Mm. Might it be time for us to really step back and do our best to, 
let's do some interpreting of history, rightly, in a limited fashion, to see if maybe, just maybe, it's time for the church to be... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, the church. It's time to, for the church to be the church, to be caring about its sheep. Any pastor who smells like the sheep will tell you the people that you go to church with and perhaps you yourself are hurting. They are struggling. They want to get through life. They want their families intact. They don't want to be fretting over finances. Health issues abound. Sin issues are staggering. And we're in Washington, D.C., trying to persuade the Congress to have some protections for an Islamic mosque being built in New Jersey. What? 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 Perhaps with this historic SBC conference, this is a chance for us to reconsider history and maybe, just maybe, make some adjustments. This is Wretched Radio. Hey, I'm Todd. I'm going to be your Uber driver. What's your destination? Uh, 2054 Kempel. No, 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 no. Your eternal destination. The liberals, they brought in Pelagianism. It's the old Sabellian heresy, denying the Trinitarian Godhead. Three persons, one God, not to the Sabellians. No. They would say that it's actually just one God. Please, somebody! Please, somebody!